Salam Marwa, I'm so happy to finally meet you um, and give light to this film that, that I think is beautiful and courageous. Um, being from Sudan myself, um, I know what it's like and I know exactly the time we were making the film, how difficult it was just to be a filmmaker, forget women, forget someone who's trying to cover any kind of topics that are difficult to talk about even in regular society. Um, so I am very, very appreciative and very proud that you were able to tackle some of these things. Um, my first reaction if, was emotional, just because I think it is always interesting to see ourselves on screen, no matter who we are, somebody that represents us, but to see this all woman cast basically, but also knowing that you were behind the lens and um, just seeing these, issues tackled I think was amazing. So I'll give you the floor to just talk a little bit about the film. Um, I know you've had an arduous journey making it as well, but if you want to just kind of tell me a bit more about um, your point of view about the film and what it means to you. Uh, first of all, I'm really happy and flattered to, to be here. And it's for me, it's, um, it's really special that you, Sarah, are the one who moderating this. Uh, we have been in contact for I don't know how long, and yeah. it's been it's been really great thing to to be able to talk about the movie with you, uh, and being part of the um, uh, African Film Festival in New York. It's such also a great thing. So the movie uh, Khartoum Offside journey started uh, many years ago now, almost five years ago. And um, I tell you, I tell you a bit how how I came to the movie. Mm. So uh, me myself, I I use I was studying chemical engineering for years, mm. and my my parents didn't really like the idea of studying art or making or making movies. Mm. So starting from that point, that I needed to really be. Being rebellious is something I needed to do myself to be a film director. Right. So it, it was not something I easily uh, gained. It was something I fight for. Mm -hmm. So whatever in life I meet someone who's fighting for to, to, to just be, who's fighting to, to realize a dream or to... Uh, I think it's not, it's not a dream. I think it's the right the right to be the best version you are right and um, in this quest i i quit chemical engineering and then i studied cinema i had to support myself i needed to leave the house of my parents i needed to be independent very young mm -hmm. and and all that made me made me the one who would do anything and everything to give the right um, give the voice to those amazing ladies in the movie mm -hmm. because i would be dishonest if i tell you it's it's only a movie and it's only about football or it's only about women in sudan untrue it's about me it's about many amazing women who were supporting me in my journey to be uh, the one who's talking to you now mm -hmm. it's about the right of speaking up the right of uh, being wherever, how poor we are, how powerless we may seem, how uh, difficult our life may, may be clear for, for, for other people. But for us, it's still, we have this margin of, we can do it. It's impossible, it seems like impossible, but still with solidarity, with friendship, with, um, with de deep commitment, with, with deep belief that we deserve. And this is how this movie started. It started five years ago. I had a phone call from Tagheri Dawuda. She, uh, she was the founder of Ru'ya and she wanted to make a five minute documentary about female footballers. And for her, it was just five minute documentary. And 
I was at that time I was living in Egypt in Cairo mm -hmm. and I told her okay why not I travel a week to Khartoum and I was uh, and I thought they, they told me there is no money that na, 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 nobody is interested in the movie and I know it and I told <laughs> them no 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 not, imp not important for me because I was working as assistant director in Egypt and I I could handle the thing but I went there I met the ladies and I realized that it would never be a five minute documentary. Mm. I want to tell the real story and I want to dig deep. <laughs> I, I'm not satisfied with five minutes. I'm not satisfied with the uh, um, superficial discussion. I am really interested in the real deep thing. And that made me, that made my life also like turn upside down. <laughs> mm. But this is the start of it. <laughs> Yes, no, it's beautiful. What you said is beautiful. And again, I, it's understanding the culture a bit. I, I know how difficult that is. It's not, you know, some people say, oh, this is difficult or it's courageous, but it, I know how it affects your family. It affects who you are, it affects how people see, see you and perceive you, how people treat you and how they associate you with. And um, it's not a very easy thing to do from where we are. Um, so talk to me about this journey with them because it is, I think there's so many layers to this, right? There's the layer of um, uh, just culturally identity, right? Uh, Arab, not Arab, uh, South Sudanese, Sudanese. And this was, um, this was shot, um, you know, before a lot of changes were going on. Um, you know, since you've shot this film, so much has happened in the country itself. But this was at a time where tribalism had kind of been brought back with the regime in terms of it was important to know where you're from and Kabila and there was a lot of on top of our normal I, I believe uh, racism that we have in our in our society there were these other layers that were kind of you know um, the government had almost given people uh, permission to now question where are you from and all these things um, but talk to me about this journey of first identity and how they perceived you in terms of building trust um in terms of kind of um you know give letting you in because you got some very intimate shots that were amazing you know with them talking freely about a lot of things so how how were you able to kind of you know go through that or cross that barrier with them I, it has been it has been extremely uh, sensitive and vulnerable journey because in the beginning, definitely they were not interested in making more than the five minute documentary. Mm. And actually they, they didn't know what's the purpose of this movie and why we are doing this and like, right. uh, and wh what we will gain from this. Right. And definitely I had no answer, no, no true answer for them because me, myself, I was struggling to continue being in Sudan, I left my house, my, my family and, and my job and, I, and I'm, I'm in Khartoum and I, I have no financiers, no funder, no producer. So I was also taking an extreme big risk and they were seeing that I'm not here, I'm not really, my Sudanese accent is not pure because I'm, I was raised in Egypt and they had many questions why I'm interested uh, what I'm gaining from this movie, why we, why, we, why we will expose our lives and ourselves. And because also there is no, uh, uh, like documentaries, the, the industry is, is really, uh, we don't have such um, productions. So, so they don't, there is no uh, like extremely successful documentary would, would make them feel like, okay, maybe, Maybe if the movie had the success, maybe it would be beneficial for us. Right, so there is no I, blueprint, right? There was nothing for them to kind of relate to and see, yeah. There was nothing. So I needed to build up from the scratch that this movie is extremely personal for me mm. <laughs> first. So I needed myself to, to be, uh, I needed to be extremely honest to expose my, my deep uh, interest and to, and to talk and to be really friend to them. I, I, at, at some point I kept the camera shut 
and I just follow them and I just wanted to really gain the trust and this took a lot of time mm -hmm. this took almost one year and a half before a year and a half before you started shooting a year and a half before I started shooting the real stuff wow wow okay I got the the normal stuff I got the the stuff that um, you know it's a it's a 75 minutes but I have like almost 100 10 hours of shooting wow. it was shot during four years and a half and and it was always a matter of because i wanted to in the movie i wanted to tackle uh, many aspects of being sudanese mm -hmm. uh, actually you you already discussed it in the beginning of your question so are we arabs or not are we uh, we have this uh, division of uh, based on tribes or not still are we still classified uh, based on uh, color of skin based on the last name of your family based on what, what whatever we have this extremely complicated multi-layered uh, discrimination in, in in sudan between between us the, ourselves so I needed to I needed to be honest about this because also the girls in the in the in the team mostly are not from the privileged tribes. Mm. So whether from Nuba Mountains or from uh, Darfur, Kordofan, uh, South Sudan. Uh, so I I felt if I didn't really touch this in a, um, in a sensitive and also indirect way, I would be missing uh, something huge in the movie. Uh, definitely the um, sexuality, definitely political situation, definitely um, uh, inequality, women, men, uh, religion. Uh, all, all, all this, I wanted, to, I wanted to tell a story about Sudan, this, uh, this obstacle that I, I have as I have this identity also uh, questioning. I've been al always questioning my, myself and the movie was my way to, to tell all the people who have been asking me if I'm truly Sudanese or not, that right. you know what I am. <laughs> I am and I, and I care and I, I belong. It's, um, and it's not a matter of, it's not a matter of, um, how you, how you want just to imagine one, extremely one frame mm -hmm. of how you can be Sudanese or not. Right. And if you are just outside of this frame, then you are not. Right. So the, the movie, the, I, I needed a lot of time to, to transfer all this to the, to the girls in the movie, but not only to the girls, because you know in Sudan, if you want to, to, to go to, to a Sudanese house, you cannot, we don't live individually, it's not you. Right. <laughs> so if, you, if I want to talk to you, yes. and I want you to trust me, I need the Habboba to trust me. Yeah, you me. have to get the whole family. The Habboba is very important, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need the brother, the sister, and maybe the neighbor. And, it's, <laughs> and I needed to, 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 to yes. enrich my communication skills to the right. highest level. Yeah. So it's, it's not about being an extremely skillful director, no. In Sudan, I needed to be a very open uh, person mm. and a person who is willing to learn and to listen right. and a person who is really, who's really humble and, um, and easy. And, and I learned that, I really. I'm, I'm grateful for, for this because I've been, I had the chance to enter many houses and I had the chance to, to, to be actually at some point, I was the one who sad and depressed and had no money and the <laughs> girls were supporting me. Oh, so beautiful. It, beautiful. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's not always black, but also it's, um, it, it, it took a lot of time. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure, I mean, it, it, it shows and I think the layers, I think you did successfully because you, there were pauses in the film where you talked about different things and you just kind of also layered them with scenes from the city, scenes from 
you know, uh, different like Mayu, which is out in, a little bit in the outskirts from downtown Khartoum. And so I think you did it beautifully in terms of giving someone who might not know or might not, might not be so close to the film or even Sudan, um, an image of just life, of the local life as well, which I think is brilliant. Um, in terms of, you know, the sexuality, I think that that was also brave. There's a moment in the film where one of the actors, or sorry, one of the um, women say, um, you know, she was stopped by a um, police officer or cop and he was asking her about being a woman versus man and she says something to him. Well, the whole problem is it begins with this labeling kind of. And then there's this pause and you get into these very intimate shots of the body. And um, I just love that moment because I think it allows the mind to wander and you don't expose anyone too much, you know, because I'm sure there's issues of sexuality um, and, and identity and what people decide, you know, uh, self-determination in a way. Um, but can you talk to me about the decision to do that and to shoot some of these intimate scenes? Did you have any fears or even after you shot it, did you have any kind of, um, you know, backlash or anything like that? Actually, this was uh, one of the, I was betting on this scene. I, I actually, I disagree with my co-producers for this scene. Hmm. And I took a lot of risk, but for me, because for, for me, it's just part of the big risk of the whole journey of the movie. Right. And I thought, you know, that it's, it's not an option now to step back. <laughs> no. For me, I, I need to be really fearless with this. I need no. to go to the limits that, I, that I'm allowed to, no. but also to, 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 to take the audience with me a little bit further little bit further than what they would expect right. that i would i would try to be as discreet as possible which which i i tried not for me as a film director i i for me it's um, it's it's different but because i'm making a documentary so i am also it's not my it's not my own fiction story i am also affecting the ladies in in, right. in the movie and i wanted right. to protect them and i wanted them to, to feel secured in, in the movie, that I am not exposing them in a way. But still, I asked them, I asked them that I wanted to do this, and this would be part of the movie, and I want your permission that you don't mind. And I was, I was glad that first of all, they didn't mind this. For me, I wanted to, I wanted to express Actually, I saw this image while uh, Henda was talking to me, while she was telling me the story. So I was, in, uh, we, we were, I was sitting in front of her and she was telling the story and well it bent, well it bent. And I, I just realized that if we really uh, take a moment and just look at those bodies, maybe we, maybe we get lost. Mm. Maybe we don't know. And maybe it's fine if we don't know. Who, who said that we need those um, ex uh, very clear uh, differences and we highlight and this is man and this is woman. And I felt, because I, I had this in, in me, I'm, I've been struggling with being bisexual, with, uh, with, with, with being fluidly, I'm, I'm trying to merge them together in my personal life and then when she said that i felt like there is something here i need to get out mm -hmm. i need to get out henda said it with words and i couldn't and i felt like right. i can't show it i can show it and i can defend it mm -hmm. if someone to if someone accused me of anything because actually some people were 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 not happy with the with the scene but they are not the majority right uh, they are the fewer voices it's they, they are not the majority of the of the people and and to be honest when 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 you are making a movie definitely you want the people to love it definitely you want an audience definitely you want it to be popular and everyone would like clap for you and everything 
but I think taking the risk or 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 pushing the limits a little bit further is part of why I'm doing movies. Yeah. Is I I just can't can't hide behind the camera or behind the story and also there is this courage that I'm listening to, that I'm surrounded with. Mm. Um, uh, it, I, I, I just, you know, I just join them also. Like it's, uh, they have it already and right. they are living it. They are living it, it already. Right. And I was just there to add, add my layer to it. Right. <laughs> but um, I felt it's extremely important and I would defend it and I would, uh, and I would do it again. Uh, it's um, it's it's something that really comes from the heart, and I and I hope it reaches the audience also to the heart. Yeah, and I I love you for that, and I love you for your courageousness. And I think, um, you know, there's another thing that she says, and it's more when she was, um, I think it was Hinda as well, uh, or maybe it was Sarah actually. But they were talking about because it was voiceover. They were talking about. Um, the idea that it's important to play other people or other teams or just the world so you actually understand where you are and you understand your position in it. And I think in terms of this idea of movements and evolution and just kind of awakening, um, again, I commend you for being honest and being honest to yourself and to them because I think a lot of times filmmakers take right what they want and they don't give back and they don't always um sacrifice as much and i'm sure for you it's, it has been a very difficult thing but i think you've produced a very honest film um but this idea that there's these movements and this kind of wave that was happening i mean we see it now and fast forward five years later and i'm touched by i'm a bit older i think than you guys you and some of the burgeoning film you know, directors and creatives coming out of Sudan and the diaspora of Sudanese. Um, and I am so just, it's, you guys have gone places I never even thought I can go. You've given me kind of courage because, you know, the conversations even within this film are things that, you know, for me, it'd be like, ooh, like difficult to have in some ways. But there is a beauty about what you've said. Um, and an honesty, and I think it was part of a wave. I think you were not only going with them, but I think you were feeling it, you know, in terms of, um, you know, something that was taking over the youth and something that was taking over the nation, the new generation and this kind of wave of honesty and being open. And I think because, and I, this is my own theory, but I think a lot of this is because there was such a numbness, there was such, a distraught feeling, especially when I'm coming from the outside and, and go back to Sudan. We are, we are the lucky ones. I was one of the lucky ones who was able to, you know, leave and I come back and forth. But I've seen it in a whole generation, you know, this kind of, ah, oh, the Sudan, like just this lack of ability to move within your own country, to move within your own self, to kind of express what you wanted. It was such a restricting regime because it wasn't in a way the same way that people think of dictatorship, like, you know, um, at least in Khartoum, I should speak, because I know other parts have very different experiences, but, you know, it's not in that way of you feel like, you know, so mob immobilized physically as well, because there's very communal and we're very, you know, communal culture that uses comedy and uses a lot of, you know, we, we find ways to live within whatever constraints you give us. But I think that was part of the, the kind of almost isolation that people were feeling in the youth. And so this wave that happened, and I think, you know, you were probably on riding it and beginning with it and to now, uh, the revolution and the movements that have happened since, um, I think are incredible. And just even for me to see, I can only imagine what my, you know, my mother's generation sees and, and feels, even though weirdly enough, they did grow up in a much freer Sudan than some of the, you know, the mm. children after, which is not usual, right? Usually you go from every generation gets more open, but I feel like, you know, from the things that they were saying, and even in the story, you know, she was talking about, oh, back in the day, her um, grandfather had this bar and stuff. I mean, you get these images of, you know, whether it's 
when you look at older photos and you see, you know, the cut off sleeves and the riding the motorbikes and, you know, the 60s hairdos and stuff like we were an open society. And so I think part of maybe why there is this freedom now is this I complete kind of asra, you know, like this hunger, almost like this choking or this kind of um, confinement, I think everyone felt, but I think it was just more than a physical, more than just of what you wear, what you put on your body, but what the body is. And, you know, the moments in the film when you talk about, um, or when you have, when you show, um, you know, the religious aspect of the fact that women shouldn't play soccer and just the extent that that, like the religion would even speak on that and just the extent of the things that it kind of touched, I think is extreme. But to bring it up a bit, just talking about, can you talk to me a bit about um, since you've made the film, um, just what you see in terms of the evolution of filmmaking in Sudan? Um, and also if the reaction to the film has changed over the years, you know, I think it's been two years since it's been out. Is that right? Or uh, uh, the one almost, uh, yeah, next February, it would be two years. Okay. It's the, the premiere was in February, 2019. Yeah. So it's kind of, it, you know, right with the revolution and right with a lot of things. So you could just speak about, I guess, about that movement or the ev revolution evolution that's happening in the film world in Sudan? Um, from where I start, uh, it's actually the, the premiere of the movie was in February and that was in the middle of the revolution in Sudan. And uh, I have been working and I have been screening the movie in, in, in festivals and I have been uh, trying to say what's going on with Sudan, with the revolution, with my friends, with the girls and the team, because it was part of the mission. It was, it was actually, I felt maybe that's why we, all the, the, the gang I'm, I'm, I'm calling, Amjad Abu Laila, Suhaib and me, Hajjouj, I believe we have been lucky and also responsible. So it, it comes with, uh, with, with a lot of responsibility that uh, we have been out there uh, speaking about our movies, but also speaking about Sudan and speaking about what's really happening, what's really going on now and what's been changing. And this, to be honest, was a, with a great, uh, with a really big uh, responsibility. Why? Because Sudan is extremely, as, as you said, it's, it was not a regime that was, we were all afraid while doing the movies. I've been, I've been um, investigated, I've been in investigated with many times. I have been stopped by police many times. They didn't get me a permission for three years, refusing the permission for me to shoot. Uh, it was extremely difficult, and I, I, I really had doubts that if revolution didn't succeed, I would mm. never be able to show the movie to my family in Sudan, mm. to the people who supported me in Sudan. I, and I've been sleeping and having those nightmares that I've, I, I'm traveling with the movie all over the world, but I'm not allowed to show it in Sudan. Mm. And then... tracing the news, finding out what's happening there. And I, I, every day I feel like we, we are almost there. It's happening, it's happening. Marwan, you need to believe in it. And because definitely I had the, the past trauma of the revolution in Egypt, the past trauma of the right. situation right. Uh, of the South, 2011, I was there. And, and, I, and I'm, I'm really filled with, with, with those negative uh, experiences with the, with the change, but then I saw it happening. Like I, 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 I saw, I saw my, 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 my friends, my, my, my people there on the streets. And, I, and I, then I, I realized that what was happening in the last 30 or 40 years in Sudan, 
I just believe it's it's the nature. Every action has a reaction, and ev- right. even if the reaction was delayed forty years, it's coming. Maybe not my generation. Maybe, maybe, maybe I will I will not live it fully, but at least, at least, we didn't lose hope or faith that we deserve to to gain our dignity again, to gain our lives again actually men and women because i don't i i never believe that men oppressing women would be a happy man like i i can right. i cannot i cannot see this at all so i believe even if they seem powerful even if they seem have loud voices uh, stronger bodies whatever but it's never it's never uh, healthy it's never really um, balanced it's never really satisfied so watching women standing in front rows of the revolution watching watching men uh, respecting women in the revolution watching the watching this extremely uh, utopia mm. uh, image of sudan was definitely my fuel <laughs> to uh, to to continue to screen the movie and to and to make a plan to screen the movie in sudan in the streets of Sudan, because now I feel like I am, I'm super, I have superpowers. I, the, the whole country <laughs> is, do, yes. is, is uh, on revolution and right. uh, we, we can do it. And, and that's how, that's how it worked. That's how I, uh, I managed uh, to, to screen the movie in, in Sudan and to feel, to feel this, to feel this life, to feel this, right. they, the people are, waiting they are craving movies they want to see themselves in the screens they are done with the indians uh, they are done with uh, with all these commercial movies in, in afra or whatever and when they hear about wallahi there is a sudanese movie and uh, won many prizes and travel whatever definitely we want to see and yes. and this was an extremely big surprise for me i didn't expect it at all I thought uh, people just forget about cinema and I will find 10 people in the, in the small hall and that's right. it. Right. But I was definitely shocked in a very positive way. That's beautiful. And it makes sense, right? It makes sense as you're awakening, you want to see images of yourself and even before, but I think you're right in that um, there's been a huge shift. And I think, and I even think with social media, I mean, I remember, you know, as early as, you know, two on, like 2010, 2012, a little after, just shooting regular photos in the street. And not only from cops or, you know, policemen, but people themselves were like, what is this covering up? But I think with the emergence of social media, I think with the emergence of, you know, from the beginning of Face or Facebook and all these other things, people have changed, you know? And so when you are on the street, you are shooting, it is more of like a oh hey versus <laughs> yes you know for most yes. um, not everyone but there's just a different relationship I think to media and I think there's a different relationship now that because of the internet and because of other things to like wow like where where is our place you know I see other people where where are we in this mm. conversation and even in the African conversation I mean if you look at other countries you know we are surrounded by other you know especially Egypt has a huge long history and um, you know on the west coast you have Nigeria and all these other filmmakers and it's like where are we in this conversation um, so I think it is very important to have these and you know the best of luck to all of you the gang as you call it who are doing some amazing things and the world is receiving it the world is receiving it, you know, like in a way that's amazing. It's not like you've made it and it's gone into some hole somewhere. The world is reacting as well. So I think that's, you know, the truth to me is when so many people are so many variant things and they agree on something. And I think that that's the truth. And I think the films you're making um, and the films that the others in the gang are making are truthful because they are hitting something that's universal in people. And I think that's, that you can't take that away, you know, and that's something that is, is in, in its purest form. So I think that's amazing. Um, I'm trying to think, I have so many things, I have so many things, things I want to talk to you about. I'm not sure how long 
we're supposed to be on for. And I also don't want to hold you, but I want to give you the opportunity. Is there anything else you want to speak about in terms of, actually, there's two things, sorry. One is where are the women now? Where's this journey now with the whole, um, you know, uh, the Federation and the, the women and funding and all these things? Okay, so there, there is one good news and one not really good news. The good okay. news is uh, the, the transitional government after the revolution, um, they, um, they agreed over uh, establishing uh, a formal uh, female league of football. That was September uh, 2019 after seven months of the movie premiere. And I was very proud and very happy for the ladies that now they can officially play in the streets or in the FIFA or whatever they want and they are secured by the government that they are allowed to right. do this. Right. So this is a very good thing. But the sad thing is they are still not forming the um, Sudanese national female team. So they are, they are still... Uh, working to, towards it, but it's still not uh, founded formally. Um, the Federation of Football, the, the unstable situation of the whole country, it's, uh, it, it didn't really help the, the sports and definitely didn't help the female uh, footballers. Hmm. But they are still playing, they are still training, and um, and actually two of the ladies now they are training uh, training other uh, younger generation of ah, uh, Sudanese women yes that's beautiful and, and this is really they, they they are still hopeful they they still okay. even if it's really unfair and difficult journey but they they are, they love it it's. Uh, it's how it's how they survive life. It's how they cope with with its uh, difficulties. Right, that's fantastic. Well, I guess it's a, you know it's a journey. It's a long path. So that must feel good at least to have known that you were you know help give light and it, hopefully maybe even the film can be used in that this idea to kind of promote why it is necessary and opinions change and I think the country's still going through a lot of changes. Um, inshallah, it turns into something that is, you know, a bit more stable and on the right side, but hopefully, hopefully, I think, you know, it's, it's got to take steps forward, you know? What were you going to say? And if I may interrupt you, Sarah, there, there is another thing that's really, it, it seems like magical about this movie business. So sometimes, to be honest, every time the movie is screened outside Sudan, I try to spread the word. And then even without trying, I found in the, in the cinema hall, Sudanese people. I don't know, but they are Sudanese diaspora. They, they are interested, they hear about the movie and they are there. <laughs> and when they are there, somehow, I knew from Sarah and Hinda that, they, that they, uh, they have been receiving emails and calls and feedback from people they don't know, but they watched the movie and then they have been in contact with them through the last whole year, till last March. And every time they were telling me, Marwa, you know this guy, and I was like, Oh, really? Ah, oh, this one watched the movie in Denmark. Oh, this one watched the movie in Canada. <laughs> this one watched the movie in Morocco. <laughs> and, right. and, and this is, this is extremely beautiful and powerful and connecting people with common interests. Sometimes it's, um, she's a, an amazing uh, Danish uh, female footballer right. wants to send whatever to Sudan. Right. Or uh, another... Um, a guy who's interested in um, training uh, the girls if they have what time in Sudan when he travels. It's, 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 maybe it's not the big thing they have been waiting for. Maybe it's not the FIFA. But at least that, you know, you, you, want, to, you want to be seen. You want to yes. be heard. Yes. And this is the most important thing. 
Yes. And, and, and this is, um, I'm sad this is the only thing I could offer, but I hope that this would continue and this yes. would bring, even if it brings like a, a good smile, a good day, a good feeling, I think mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's good. It's, um, it's still worth it. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so in terms of the feeling and in terms of what the film's journey can do and has done for both people outside and letting them know about it and the, and the movement and just what is going, because a lot of people didn't even know, I didn't even know that this was, you know, there was like um, a woman's team that there was like this push to do it. But also yeah. for those who are, you know, the women in the film, um, and this beautiful link that you've created through the film um, to have people come back to them. I was wondering if there's a way to get funding or for them to kind of have form some kind of organization as this film travels, as world travels, that can maybe help them. Like you said, it might not be <clears throat> FIFA, but it might at least get them funding. It might get them, you know, so just wondering if that's something that you have talked about or if they've discussed at all. We we have been we have been trying to to manage this, but but to be honest, to I didn't um, as as the movie itself we didn't complete our budget. I uh, mm -hmm. we 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 didn't manage to get the right uh, funding to for the movie itself, and and then after when I tried to uh, approach other people for only for the team, it was also a very difficult. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, journey and and I was already you know working on the movie as a producer director camera person so I was I was already overloaded with the movie and once I um, once I managed to to complete the post-production I I really couldn't uh, put uh, another uh, period of time to to manage funding for for the ladies, but what I what I what I've been trying to connect them with is to find uh, associations uh, in Berlin and in Denmark, and they have been in contact with the with the ladies to invite them to play uh, outside. Oh, of that's Sudan. beautiful! And 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 th this is amazing, and hopefully this would happen next summer in Berlin, mm. and they are in contact with this uh, amazing association in Denmark as well. And we, part of the part of the thing was to invite uh, Sarah and Hinda to the premiere, to the Danish premiere. So they oh, were with great. me in Copenhagen. Oh, they made it! That's beautiful. Yes, oh. yes. and actually, great. and actually, we, we we have been working to have the four ladies, but uh, for visa matters, uh, uh, only two got the visa, mm. which is really sad. Mm. Uh, but uh, they they managed to come to meet with the people to introduce themselves and to to meet with the um, uh, players in, in in Copenhagen. That that was really beautiful. That's great. And, but yeah, I I sadly I couldn't do more because the journey of the movie itself was really tough and and it was difficult to to produce the movie. Um, so yeah, so thank you in terms of you're saying it was a, it was a big um, feat to just finish the film and it shows and it's I think a beautiful document that you've left that's you know in a way timeless because it just captures a moment that was a beautiful moment and hopefully there's more good news. Um, I think that there's you know other people can step in we can only as filmmakers you take your carry it to a certain point and then sometimes it's you know for other people so if there's anyone out there that wants to take that on or is now knows about this initiative that's happening feel free to step in we can always give you information of how to get in touch with the filmmaker um, so that's a good thing um, and then I guess to wrap things up just what are you working on now and what are, you know, what are, where, where are you based and what are you working on and what's your future kind of yeah. prospects or things you want to work on look like? Okay. Okay. So uh, now uh, I am, um, I'm continuing my uh, master in film in Cologne in Germany. So uh, I'm doing, um, I'm researching essay movies and, experimental documentary so i'm trying to 
uh, go further with the, with the image and sound. Uh, parallel to that, uh, I'm um, uh, developing uh, a TV uh, series Hi. with uh, yes, with uh, with a nice, uh, amazing Sudanese team with the Sudanese story. Uh, so we are uh, developing this. Um, I, it's uh, still in progress, so I cannot say uh, uh, more about it. But I'm the I'm in the writing team. Uh, this is second thing. And last thing, I hope I can uh, by by next year to to start uh, working on my first uh, fiction film that I have been postponing for a while. But you know, after the movie, I needed time to reflect, time to to focus my energy again, time yeah. to to align myself where where I'm where I'm living and. Uh, how I connect with the world, because to be honest, the last four years I've been traveling a lot based on the movie, based on mm. the finance workshop, pitching. My life was, was almost about how I can finish this movie. So now that I finished and after finishing the movie was screening the movie and get it, it out to the world and then was to get it out in Sudan after the revolution. So the, the journey for me was very overwhelming and very intense until March, until Corona. <laughs> yeah. So when, when I had this uh, Corona pause, I knew that uh, now is, I need a pause. So, uh, uh, so now there is like a nice pause with the studying and writing. Yeah, this is what I'm doing at the moment. That is beautiful. Well, continued luck. Keep me, if, you know, I would love to keep in touch figure out, you know, whatever you need, whatever you're doing, just to know, you know, to help you out and just have a creative community going. Um, thank you for doing this. Um, I think I predict the film, film will be really well received. I think it's, a, again, a beautiful, beautiful, beautifully shot and just a beautiful sentiment. Um, and I, I genuinely, genuinely thank you for taking this risk with your time, with your life, with, you know, exposing um, parts of yourself and, you know, encouraging, I don't think you're exposing, encouraging those around you as well. Um, I think that, you know, black women are an amazing thing and we need, we do need more people like you um, to just kind of take things further and think outside of what we are supposed to do, you know, do the things that we know are, are right. And I think that's amazing. So Marwa, thank you so much. It was so nice to actually kind of talk to you. <laughs> th th thank you so much. You, you don't know how much I'm happy that, uh, that we are doing this, even it's online. But right. we, we hope we will be liberated from our laptops soon. <laughs> <laughs> right, break out of this box. <laughs> exactly. And uh, we're able to, you know, to, to hug again and to, to communicate easily. Right. But I am, I'm grateful for, for this opportunity. And I wish people would receive it uh, well, would enjoy it. Um, and um, definitely... Definitely, we, we, we are the origins, you know? We, right. we are the origins of, of this uh, history. We need to, we need just to re remind ourselves and to uh, get ready to, you know, w wake up again, do it right. again, right. try it again. Right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And, Aww, thank uh, you. We wish you an amazing, amazing, amazing festival. Aww. Amazing days. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.